H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Okay. First of all, Selenium is that tool which we just spoke about in the previous slide. Selenium is that automation tool which we are going to use to automate our websites. That is, it is Selenium is that software which we are going to use for automation purpose. All right. In the previous slide, we, we discussed about what automation testing is. Right. So Selenium is one of the most popular open source automated tools. Now, what is open source? Open source means it is completely free. You don't have to pay any subscription fee for that. You don't have to buy any license for this. You just go to Selenium website and you can download it and you can start working with it. So that is what we call as open source. Okay. Unlike QTP, if you are working in QTP or UFT, you have to pay a hefty amount to buy a license for that. It is not a free tool. It is a commercial tool. You pay around $8,000 for one license. Okay, so that is quite uh, costly for companies. If, if they have to buy some uh, five licenses, $40,000 directly they are going to pay. And that is a huge amount of money, a huge amount of investment, which a company organization will have to uh, make. And after the licenses, they need to buy something called as uh, support as well. That is a mandatory for three years of support. The, the minimum support which they offer is three years. And for that, the company has to pay pay $300,000 for three years, all right? So $300,000 for support plus individual licenses. So the cost escalates too much if the organization is using QTP. But on the other hand, if the organization starts using Selenium, it can do the same work without investing a zero penny in that, right? Because this is open source. So this is the most important reason why the organizations nowadays are looking for Selenium. If this is switched to Selenium, it is going to save a huge amount of money for them as compared to if they use QTP in the project, right? So this is the reason companies are looking for people who know, who have the knowledge of QTP, right? So Selenium is one of the most popular open source automated testing tools available in the market. Okay, so what is automation testing? We just discussed it is validating. It is the process of validating and verifying whether the application, whether the software programs works as expected using any automation tool, right? So the automation tool which we are going to use is Selenium. The main purpose of automation testing is to automate a regression testing. What is regression testing? Some of you might have heard about regression testing. So what is regression testing which we are going to work with? Automation is best suited for regression testing. So what is regression testing? Let us try to understand what regression testing means. Software companies keep updating their softwares and they call it as a new version has been given for that software, right? Uh, recently, there has been, if you, if you use Instagram, uh, most, of the, most of you guys might be using Instagram, I guess. Right. So it is a photo sharing app on our mobile phones. So just recently. Instagram launched a new feature that you can zoom into the photographs as well. Previously, this feature was not available, but just recently they launched the feature that you can zoom into the photographs as well when you are looking at them. So they launched a new version of Instagram. So let us discuss Let us write it in context to the IT industry. Okay, so if you talk about Instagram, okay, so let us say the version which they were using was version 25.1. Okay, so the versions are given certain names the certain numbers by the organization. Okay, so like 25.1, 25.2, these are going to be the numbers which are used by the organizations. 
Right, so I'm just using an arbitrary, arbitrary number. Okay, suppose in the version, uh, we're talking about the previous version when the zooming feature was not available. So in the previous version of Instagram, what we had, uh, let us discuss the features which it had. The first feature which it had was to share photographs. Right. Secondly, we could share videos. And thirdly, uh, we could use, we can, we could send a DM. What is DM? Sending a direct message to a user. It is just like Facebook. We, we call it as a sending a message to your friend, but in Instagram, they call it as DM, direct message. All right. So we're just assuming that these are the three features which were there in Instagram previous version. Of course, there are many other features. We just to discuss the example of regression testing, just to understand regression testing, we're going to see it from Instagram's example that these were the three features which were being supported by Instagram. Okay, so after they updated, so let us say the updated version became the name of the uh, the number of the software became 25.2 when they updated it. Okay, so when the version became updated to 25.2, what they did, they added the new feature. The first, the third, two, three features, uh, the first, second, third feature, they are going to remain as it is, right? Apart from that, what they added, they added new fourth feature to zoom in into the photographs. This was the fourth feature they added, apart from the three features we already had. Now, the, when the organization, when the Instagram is going to launch this feature, when they're going to uh, add the new feature, what they need to do is they need to thoroughly test, it, their test their application, whether this is working as per expectations or not. Okay. So what they do is before launching it to general public, before people can update their Instagram app on their mobile phones, what they do is they thoroughly test it. So what they do is, before it is thrown open to the general public, they test the old functionality which existed before adding the new feature. Of course, this feature also needs to be tested whether it is working fine or not, right? After testing this, what they're going to do is they are going to test the previously existing functionality, the old functionalities of point number one, two, and three, that is of sharing photos, videos, and sending DM whether they are working or not. Why, why, why do they need to test it? When you update your software, sometimes what happens is the old functionality also gets affected. Okay, this needs to be tested. Due to addition of a new piece of software, my old functionality should not get affected. That is what the purpose of testing is. So when you test your old functionality, when a new feature has been added into the application, we call it as regression testing. Okay, so when you're testing the feature number one, two, and three in Instagram, we're not talking about the new feature. We are talking about the old features in Instagram. Okay, so when you're going to test your old features of the application, when a new feature has been added, that is called as regression testing. Okay, we just want to make sure that due to addition of new feature, my new functionality did not get affected in any way, right? So that is what we call it as regression testing. Okay, so Selenium or any automation tool which we use, primarily they help us in performing regression testing. Why regression testing? Regression means something being repeated. Okay, so tomorrow just suppose uh, Instagram updates its to new version from 25.2 to 25.3 and they add a new feature. Some new feature is added. Okay, so what they're going to have, they, they are going to have all the above functionalities, functionality one, two, three, and four is going to be there. They're going to add a new functionality at number five, right? So it can be any functionality. 
So what you need to do is when the application is launched, when, you, when the application is thrown open to the general public, they need to test these points again. One, two, three, four, what we had in uh, old functionality. Okay, so when they're going to test the point one, two, three, and four, this will be called as regression testing. Okay, so why it is regression testing? Because we tested one, two, three previously as well by just adding the fourth point here. One, two, three are still there, but fourth point has been added. So still we are testing, we are again testing the points one, two, and three. So that is why we call it as regression testing, something which is being repeated. We call it as regression testing, All right? And this regression testing is the best candidate for automation. There are various kinds of testing which we do in our projects, okay? Many kinds of testing are there, but regression testing is the best candidate, best suitable candidate for automation, All right? And why is it best candidate? And you're going to get this question in interview as well. When you're testing, when you are automating a test case, how do you decide whether to automate it or not? So the very first condition which you must see in a test case to automate is you must realize that whether the process is getting repeated or not. If something is getting repeated, then we automate it. If it is only being tested once or twice, we are not going to automate it, right? Because there is some effort you're going to put in in the uh, automation of the website, or oh, sorry, the test case, automation of test case. So if it is only being tested once, it is the process is not repeating, then we don't automate it. All right. So main purpose of automation testing is to automate regression testing because in regression testing, we do the testing repeatedly. That is what we call as regression testing. And then uh, which tests can be automated? Okay, if you talk about the tests, uh, the tests can be categorized into these four categories, stable tests, smoke test, data driven test, and high priority test. So what are stable tests? Stable tests correspond to stable applications. Okay, so stable applications are those applications for which we don't re receive any change request. That is, the client is satisfied with the application. He is not changing the requirements. Then we call it as stable application. Okay, so if the application is stable, we can create automation scripts for them. Otherwise, we don't do it. If the requirement is changing, uh, because once you write a script, it becomes very difficult to change it. Of course, you can change it, but it is going to involve some extra effort. So if the application is changing, we don't write the automation script for that. Then there is something called as smoke testing. Smoke testing is whenever a new version of the software is launched, uh, like if you take this example, what we just studied in the previous case here, okay? Uh, when a new version of the software is launched, before before starting regression testing, before testing the new functionality, what they do is they just check the main functionality of the application, whether that is working or not. That is called as smoke testing. For example, Instagram is mainly used for sharing photographs. That is the main functionality of the application. So when they update their software, what they do is they check the main functionality, whether the photo fe sharing feature of a uh, your Instagram is working or not. Okay, so main the critical functionality of the application is testing tested that is it working fine or not then it is called as smoke testing. Right, why we call it as smoke testing smoke testing got its name from testing of hardware devices in the ele electronics com electronic components initially when electronic uh, devices were launched back in 1940s and 1930s what people do is after assembling all their chips and uh, wires on one board, when they switched on the mains, what they tested it for, they just wanted to show there is no smoke coming out of the electric circuit. And nothing is shorted in that circuit, right? From that, it got smoke testing. If smoke is not coming out of the electronic circuit, then they proceeded with, rest, with the rest of the testing. If smoke started coming out of the electronic circuit, then that means they in immediately switched off the mains of the circuit and they tried to find out where the circuit is getting shorted. That is why it is called as smoke testing. You verify in case of software, you verify when the op software is updated, is everything working fine or not? 
before you start actually testing the application, before you start performing regression testing or other kinds of testing, you have to make sure that everything's working fine. The main, main critical functionalities, they are working fine. They did not get affected due to my update. So when you test your application for the critical functionalities after addition of the new software, that is called as smoke testing. Right. And as you can see, whenever a new version is launched, smoke testing has to be performed. We just want to make sure uh, my critical functionalities are working. Right. So that is what we call as smoke testing. And since smoke testing is also something which is done repeatedly in the projects, we automate this as well. Right. So this is also done. Then that is something called as data driven testing. What is data driven testing? Uh, just example, just consider an example where you are testing, you have been given a task to uh, find out or to, uh, you know, just test 100 different combinations of usernames and password on Facebook. If you do it manually, it is going to be quite boring. It is going to become monotonous. What instead you do is you write all the usernames and password in an Excel sheet. Okay that is going to be my data that needs to be tested on the application okay so that data now will be separated from the application okay so when the same application is tested for different set of data we call it as data driven testing my data is saved somewhere in the excel sheet my 100 usernames and passwords are saved in the excel sheet using selenium we're going to do a magic by which Selenium is going to interact with Excel sheet as well. Okay, so just consider this case. This is my Selenium. Uh, this is my Excel sheet where the user